Hey church, good morning, Merry Christmas. It's so good to see you. We're gonna to continue to worship. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Most worthy, worthy of praise, exalted above all things, my God, you are my God, your splendor and majesty, your wonder fills everything, my God, you are
Amen. Holy is the Lord. Holy is our God. Around the throne currently, there are living creatures that continuously day and night say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who is, who is to come. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Our God, the Holy One. You know, at this season, I always think of Isaiah 9 and prophet Isaiah. Many generations prior to Christ's birth prophesied. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For those living in the land of the deep darkness, a light has dawned. That's good news for us today. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace and Everlasting Father. Of the greatness of his government and of its peace, there shall be no end, and he will reign upon David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it from this time now and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord shall accomplish this. The Lord is zealous for the union of heaven and earth. He is zealous for every heart to be at home, a place of home for His Son. And in this season, as we, as we meditate, as we contemplate, as we celebrate, as we with grateful hearts recognize the power and the majesty of our God, the one who came as a babe, humble and lowly, but now victorious, seated at the right hand of the Father. This God, He cares for every need. And so at this time in the service, we love to take the opportunity as the prayer team comes and stands on the sides to bring our hearts and our requests before this God who loves us, the one who came near to us for his divine purpose of making his home in your heart and in my heart. Beautiful. So we wanna pray with you. There are places in your life that, that you want to have a touch from this God, our God, the Holy One, the Mighty Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, this God who cares. We also have communion set up in the back as a place of remembrance and our posture of worship and of adoration of the living and beautiful God that we serve and love. So take this time and just continue to enter into worship. Feel free to come and have our prayer team pray. Feel free to go and receive the communion elements. Feel free to hope in your, open your hearts and worship. The Lord loves you and He is near. Victor 
deserve it all. You deserve it all. And we give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. Oh, you deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We're just going to continue in this posture of worship and prayer. The prayer needs that have come in to our, to our house through the connect cards from last week. Staff has prayed over them, but we want to have the opportunity together to join corporately in agreement. So if just as an act of faith, you just lift your hand toward the screen, pick one of those and just pray and ask the Lord to intervene. God, we thank you that you hear our needs and you hear our prayers. You know the very needs of our life and our hearts. We ask you, God, for these places that have come in, the places of the children going through anxiety, ones having seizures. We ask you for guidance, God. We ask you for breakthrough in marriage and family. We ask you for wisdom in parenting. We ask you for these places of job and employment, Lord. We ask you, God, to intervene, to stretch out your arm to release your heart and your plan into the midst. We ask you that heaven would come to earth. Intervene, God, on our behalf, Lord. We thank you that you are a God who hears, who cares, who knows the very needs before we even ask it of you. This is how good you are, God. But today we join our faith in agreement with your, your plan going forth for each one. In Jesus' name. We also pray for another church in our city. You know, the city of Wilmington has many, many offerings that, that call upon the name of Jesus. And so Lord, we just wanna bless these from the Bridge Church and Pastor Ethan. We ask you, Lord, that you, would, that you would pour out your spirit upon them, that your heart would be made known to them in a new and in a fresh way. We ask God that 2023, that they would see salvations increase and all the things of your resource of your kingdom increase for them, Lord, that you would stretch out your, stretch out the tents, that you would give them spaciousness and all that they desire to do in accordance with your plan and your purpose would be done on earth as it is in heaven. We bless them as a sister church in our city. Lord, we love the city of Wilmington and we thank you for Life Church. We thank you that you planted us here, that we have a portion here, that we have something to offer by the name of your son, Jesus, to be glorified. We ask you, Lord, to pour out your blessings and your heart and that you would increase us ever. Lord, we know that you have a lot of good things ahead for us in 2023. We are taking that step of faith. We are believing for what you desire to do through this house for your namesake in the city of Wilmington and in our region. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We just thank you for your presence in this place. We just give everything we have to you, right here, right now. In light of the week we've had, the morning we've had, whatever our lives have been like here recently, we just lay it at the cross. We just open up our hearts to you. We give our hearts completely to you. Were creation suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry From north to south and east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Yeah
everything I do, Christ be magnified, Jesus be lifted high, higher than any sickness, higher than any, higher than anything. And strong to worship you and if it puts me in the fire I'll rejoice cause you're there too and I won't be formed by feelings I'll hold fast to what is true and if the cross brings transformation you can hang me there with you cause death is just the doorway into resurrection life join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing, my song will be the same. Oh, Christ be magnified, just let his praise arise. Christ be in your people this morning come on we're just gonna take a moment this morning to push in to press in Christ be magnified Christ be magnified even in the parts of our life that ain't quite right yet even the parts in our life that we feel hasn't seen full freedom yet Christ be magnified Christ be magnified in every area every area of our life Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh. Christ be magnified, yes. Oh. There's a theme that runs through the Bible, loving and giving. It runs all throughout the Bible. And here's the most popular definition of that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son loving and giving to love is to give this morning we stand as a people of God as his children that love him am I right church come on we have gathered here because we love the same God the one God creator of the universe so this morning let's love him by giving to him and I mean giving all that's within our hearts, all that's within our minds, all that's within these bodies. Let's lift it up to him as a fragrant offering of worship. And let's, let, let's just sit in the love that he pours out for us and just see what happens. Are you with me? We're going to sing this bridge again and we're going to declare it. I won't bow to idols. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's sing it out. And I won't bow to idols. I'll stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice cause you're there too. And I won't be formed by feelings, I hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, you can hang me there with you. Cause death is just the doorway into resurrection life. And if I join you, suffering then i'll join you when you rise and when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints my heart will still be singing my song will be come on church oh christ be magnified just let his praise 
love this season of Christmas that we're in and everything kind of points back to, points back to Jesus. And in culture, we kind of celebrate that in Easter and in Christmas, but I love that, I love that here at Life Church, we do that every single week, that we're a body that believes in this every single week. And it's not just a cultural holiday that we get to check off that, oh, Christ is born, Christ is resurrected, but no, that we're a body that believes and we're so thankful for it. And each and every week that we come in, we're thankful with thankful hearts that we have to give Him all the glory, that our circumstances on Monday may look different, but we're still saying, God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We all know what's happening, but we're gonna press in and give you glory. And it's amazing. So church, thank you so much for, for believing in that and for pushing in and for worshiping with all you have. Because how many of you guys know He is worthy? He's worthy on Sunday. He's worthy on Monday. He's worthy when it's not Christmas, when it's not Easter. He's worthy of it all. One of the ways that I like to magnify the Lord is, is through finances and through giving. And, and today I wanna to read to you guys a verse in Proverbs 11:25, and it says, a generous person will prosper and whoever refreshes others that they will be refreshed. And so Lord, right now, we just thank you for a church that is generously giving, Lord God, and that they generously give with their whole hearts. We thank you, Lord, that we get to bless others. Lord, right now, I just thank you for each person that gives today, that you bless them every single place that they go, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And there's three ways in which you can give. You can give online, you can give here in person um, by dropping it off in the containers in the back and in the lobby, and then through our mobile app as well. Uh, and so you, if you guys could, that'd be fantastic. But you guys can have a seat. Thank you so much for being here, worship team. Thank you guys, y'all are awesome. Y'all are fun. Love you guys. <laughs> Aren't they great? They're awesome, every single, it's, they're, they're fun. <laughs> I love it. Well, Merry Christmas, Life Church. How many of you guys like the trees? How many of you guys have had your trees up for like longer than a month now? Have you guys, anyone before Thanksgiving put their tree up? Yes, oh, quite a few of you guys. All right, so you guys are already in the Christmas spirit. Well, hey, a couple of announcements for you guys. The first thing is our Next Steps class. If you wanna learn more about who we are at Life Church, the Next Steps class is a great place for you to learn. And so January 8th, will be our first Next Step class of the year. And so we'd love to learn more about you and we wanna hear your story as well, but we love being able to tell the story of Life Church and helping you get plugged in. And so if you want to become a part of that Next Step class, you can register today. Um, we do ask that you do register for this. We do provide childcare and we do provide lunch for that. So if you don't mind, please doing that. Those take place right after the second service um, on the first three Sundays of the month. Well, not the first three, but January 8th, the 15th and the 22nd of this month. And so please sign up for that. That would be fantastic. And then this Friday, we have our Christmas Eve Eve service. And so we want you guys to be here Friday night at four o'clock and at six o'clock. And so it's gonna be a beautiful candlelight service. We've got some beautiful elements to the day. And so you do not wanna miss that. Bring your family, bring your friends. And it's gonna be moving, it's gonna be powerful and it's gonna be fantastic. But we do not have service on Sunday. We do not have it on Christmas morning. So spend time with your family and do all that stuff. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great, but spend time with your family that day. And then January 1st, we are having one service at 10 a.m. So for you guys, that's uh, about an hour earlier than it normally is. For the morning service, it's an hour later than it normally is, but 10 a.m. on January 1st. So enjoy your New Year's Eve and then come here ready to give God. I love that we get to have New Year's Day celebrating it in church. There's no better place to celebrate the beginning of a year than in church. So that should be a day where you're coming in full of faith, ready to go for that day. So come on New Year's Day and it's gonna be fantastic. But church, we have a video we wanna show for you guys, but get ready, we've got an awesome service still coming. Who is Jesus? 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 Let me tell you about my Jesus. 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 Merry Christmas, church. Merry Christmas, church. <laughs> oh, so good to see you. If you're a guest today, we want to welcome you. Can you join me in just saying welcome to our guest? We're glad you're with us. Please come back and be with us. We're in a series called My Jesus, and we're talking about different aspects of what Jesus means to us. And so I'll, I'll be a part of that in just a minute. Before I do that, I want to give us an update on our building, because if you're new to us, this is just temporary. We're not here forever. This is just a temporary tent for us until we have our permanent space. And um, so work has been going and going well. 
I was at the building last week and all of the interior walls are framed up. Amazing, it's so great. Yeah, you can clap, it's great. The electricians are in there. It looks like a beehive in that place right now. They're, they're putting wires everywhere. The plumbers have trenched places out for where the bathroom plumbing is gonna go through the concrete and, and it's going really well. It looks like to me, I don't know, I'm no construction expert, but it looks like they're ahead of schedule to me. That's all, I'm just gonna land right there and just, it looks great. We're probably six weeks into about a nine month project. And so probably this fall we'll be in there and we'll be able to have our first service in our brand new building, brand new. It's gonna be amazing, I cannot wait. Uh, and so thank you for just praying about that and being a part of that. And, and matter of fact, you are a part of it. Let me share with you how you're part of it. Back in the beginning of the year, we had a courageous campaign and the campaign was a fundraiser to help support the renovation project. It was for all of the lobby furniture. We've got brand new furniture gonna be in there. It's gonna be beautiful. We're buying new auditorium chairs and so you won't have to sit on plastic chairs and we have new sound and new lighting and new video equipment. Now we're gonna utilize everything we have here but it's a significantly bigger auditorium and so there's gonna be some things we have to add to make that work. We have signs that are gonna direct you to the kids' ministries and down to where the bathrooms are and all the signage is gonna be there. Children's furniture, we're gonna to have to have, you know, children's furniture, we got, we got babies coming, you know that, we have babies coming. And I bring that up just cause that was my segue to tell you that I'm gonna be a grandpa come this January, I can't wait. My, my grandfather name is Champ, by the way. So if you're wondering, I've, I've already, listen, they asked me years ago when Casey was gonna have her children and, and we claimed them as our, you know, our, our, our kids as well. But either way, I mean, we love these little beautiful children Casey and Jared had. And so, but Casey asked me, what do you want your name to be? And I'm like, I get to name my name. I get to come up with a brand new name. Cause I didn't wanna, listen, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like grandpa. Um, you know, and I didn't want to come up with something strange. So I said, Casey, I'm going with champ. I like, I'm going to declare that over my life. And so, so those little girls run up and say champ. And so we're going to carry that on. It's, it's amazing. So we're going to have children's furniture in that space. We're going to have at least one crib. I know, cause I'll be buying it, but, um, we're going to have children's furniture. We're going to have coffee and cafe equipment. So all of this is part of the, the campaign that we started in January. And so many people have made annual and monthly and weekly contributions and commitments to give to the Courageous Campaign that's above their tithes and offerings. And it's just incredible to see the number of people who have committed to see God move through our church. And I just wanna compliment you that are giving and just say thank you so much. Um, your money is being stewarded and God is using it well and we're gonna see great things. And if you want to join the campaign, you can. You can go out by our guest table out there. Greg will be out there. He'd love to help you get started with that. And I wanna give you an update though on our finances because I'm blown away with the generosity of this church. And so here's a financial update on our campaign because we were wanting to raise a goal of $1.5 million over three years. Yeah, sorry guys, I messed you up. Um, $1.5 million over three years. And this is what came in in November alone, $63,000 towards that campaign. And to date, we've raised $517,000. And that's through your generosity. And I just wanna say thank you so much. Also ha want to show you something. I have a, a treat for you. I have something that um, you're gonna really wanna see because we've already purchased our brand new chairs and I have one for you to see. So Eli, would you bring out the brand new chair? Here it comes, look at this. Come on, buddy. Here it is, look at that chair. That is the, the 2023 luxury model church chair. Oh my good. Oh, massage comes with, does it come every Sunday at the new building massage? Me. I mean, you just ought to feel this chair. Like your chair you're in is nothing compared to this. Uh, I'm gonna have to preach really strong to yep. keep them awake in the new building. So it's amazing. So I wanna do something. Um, let's just let one person in here enjoy 
this beautiful chair today. So I'm thinking over here, like Miss Joyce Beatty, I think she ought to get the good chair right over here. So would you take that chair to Miss Joyce? Go ahead and stand up, Joyce, because you're getting ready to have an amen moment right here. John Fuller, pull that other chair out of the way. Help her out. There you go. Joyce, now get ready. You're getting ready to experience something. Glory's coming. You ready? Whoa. <laughs> How about that? Joyce, tell me, how's it feel? Luxurious. That's what I want to hear. Thank you, Eli. Good job. I can't wait for all of you to experience the glory of a brand new chair in our new building. It's going to be amazing. So um, let me just pray as we get started. We're going to pray for our contractors. We're going to pray for the campaign. We're going to pray for today's message as well. So let's take this moment. Father, we really love you. We're so excited about what's ahead also, Lord, though, I want to say thank you for now. We're grateful for where we are, but our eyes are set also on what's to be. And so, Lord, we thank you that our future is bright. We thank you for new chairs. We thank you for a new building. We thank you for cribs. We thank you for the new babies that will come. We thank you for the people that will come in for the first time and experience your presence in that building. So God, we pray you bless the campaign that we would raise all the money that you have set aside for us. God, we pray over our contractor. We pray for John Urban, our contractor, that you would bless him and his company. We pray that you'd bless all the subcontractors and that they would, they would work with excellence, God. We pray that, that our building would come in under budget and ahead of time, Lord. And so, Lord, we lift that up to you. God, I pray for the message. I pray for your anointing on this moment, God, that you would use the words that I speak to be your words today. And so I pray that in the wonderful name of Jesus can I get a great amen, church? Amen. Awesome. That was great. Thank you so much. Well, I want to tell you about My Jesus is our series, and I want to take us to the book of Mark to get started. I want to read this section of scripture to you, and then I'll give you the title to my message. The book of Mark says this. It says that Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. Jesus said, I'll tell you the truth. Now, listen, Jesus says that, but it's not like sometimes he lies. Um, it's, he is making a point here to draw attention to the next statement. So he says, I tell you the truth that you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. My title today is, my Jesus still moves mountains. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen church. Amen. My Jesus. My Jesus has not lost his power. Like he, he, is, he is not asleep in heaven. My Jesus is not weak and my Jesus is still on the throne. And my Jesus is able to move mountains. I want you to know the reason that he moves mountains is that my Jesus and your Jesus genuinely cares about your needs. If you care about it, then God cares about it. If it's important to you, then it's important to God. And the things that you pray about and the mountains that you're asking to be moved are important to God. And I want you to know that God can move mountains in your life. Let me ask you a question as I get started today. Are there any mountains in your life that need to be moved? Is there anything in your life that you are dreaming of that's still in front of you? Are there any obstacles to what is in your life? Is there anything in the year of 2023 that you are hoping to see come to pass? And so what I want to do in this sermon today is just simply stir your faith. I, I, want, to, I want to expand the possibilities in your heart I actually want to help you to believe in the potential of God to move your mountains this year. And so I have things that I'm praying about. I hope you have things you're praying about. 
And I believe that God can move those mountains in our life. For our church, I'm praying for 2023 that we are able to help 100 people give their life to Christ in 2023. That would be amazing. I just want to see it. I'm praying for it. I want to see our attendance grow by 100 people before we get to Easter services. I'm praying for it. I want to see God move because not because I want us to be bigger, but every person has a story and I want their story to come into an encounter with the presence of Jesus. I want to see our building completed ahead of time and under budget. Amen. Like I'm praying for this stuff. I want to see it come to pass. My faith is on that. Personally, I'm praying for the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl this year. Well, a couple of you are happy. A couple of you are looking at me sideways. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't know if I have that much faith. I just don't think I do. I want to see a white Christmas in Wilmington, don't you? Yeah, come on. I heard that the Christmas Eve Eve service that day is supposed to be super cold and potentially some snow. So I'm just saying, let it be, Lord, because I want to see snow. Amen to that? All right, listen, I'm, I'm playing around with you. Uh, in all seriousness, my Jesus still moves mountains, and I want to help us build our faith today. The beginning today I want to share with you is that you must have the right foundation of faith. The Bible said when we read this that Jesus said to his disciples that that we must have faith in God, like faith in God. I want to put the emphasis on the in God part because we have to have faith in him that he will do what we've prayed for, what's according to his will. Faith is believing, it's confidence, it's, it's trust in God, it's faith in him. Now, I believe that every person has faith. Every person in this room has a measure of faith. Everybody in the world has faith, but not everyone has faith in God. Not everyone puts their faith in God. And we have faith. Listen, I, you have faith. You may not even realize that you have faith. This morning when you came to church and you came and you sat down and just before you sat down, you looked at that plastic chair and you made a decision and you said, you know what? I have just enough faith that if I place my rear end in that seat, that it's going to hold me up, right? That was faith. Now, Miss Joyce, she doesn't have to have as much faith as us today because she's got a metal chair that's the, the deluxe 2023 church chair, all right? So, but, but faith, faith. If you have ever flown on an airplane, you have faith in a pilot that's going to get you up and bring you back down where you want to be. Have you ever ridden on a, fly, on a plane and you look out the window and, and I've seen the wing and it does this number. It's moving out there. Have you ever seen that? I'm like, whoever bolted that wing to this bullet, I have faith in him because it's doing the, it bothers me a little bit when it moves. We have faith. When you're driving down the highway, you have to have a lot of faith in Wilmington. But just think about this whole idea. You're driving 60 miles an hour this way and coming right at you. Someone's driving 60 miles an hour and you just have to have faith that they're going to keep it on their side of the road and you right by each other. Faith. I believe that faith is hardwired into our human nature. God created us with faith. Faith isn't mysterious. It's not an elusive thing. Sometimes we, we take a, a biblical word like faith and, and it becomes mysterious to us. We're like, I don't know how to apply it. And I just want you to know you're already applying belief in your life all over the place. The question isn't whether or not you have faith. The question is, is are you going to place your faith in God? The, the, the question is, is, is not are you going to uh, find faith it's just where you're going to put your faith. And oftentimes we place our faith in inferior things because we're all using faith. You already have faith. You put it into practice. Sometimes we place our faith though in our past experiences because we've had experiences that are negative or experiences that have happened in some way. And so we begin to, to do the math in our head and it says, well, 
this has happened five times in my life this way. Therefore, it'll probably continue to happen that way. And so you are putting your faith, your confidence, your trust in something of the past. But that's inferior to putting your faith in God. Some people have placed their faith, including myself, in, in current realities. We, we look at the things that are going around, going on around us in our life. And, and there's no doubt there's plenty of difficulties and plenty of issues that, that are working to define our future. But I want you to know that current realities are, are inferior to the reality of who God is and what he can do. And that's what faith does. Too often, though, we allow the facts that we see erode away the faith that we need for God to move in our life. We need faith. Sometimes we place our faith in our own abilities. We, we place it in our own skills and, and our own talents. And, and the reality is, is that, yes, we should steward our talents and our abilities and always give our best, but those are going to be limited compared to what God can do. Amen. And so we don't want to place our faith in those inferior things, the past experiences and realities and our abilities. They, they don't compare to what God can do when we place our faith in him. So faith isn't complicated. You already have it. Faith in God is having a belief in the full potential and the power of God in, in his, his work in your life. I believe there's potential for breakthroughs in your life and potential for healings in your life. I think there's potential for, for God to, to work through the difficulties in your life and not only get you through them, but to help you have better days ahead. Faith can look at the, the brokenness of our culture and it's there. Faith can look at the, the difficulties of our economy and it's there. Faith can understand the limitations of our own abilities and still say that 2023 can be a great year for my family and for my business. Because faith, because God is not inferior. God is superior to everything else going on. Some people though, struggle with faith, faith to believe what God can do. And they look at the, the brokenness of culture. They look at the difficulties of the economy and they say, well, I don't know if 2023 is going to be a very good year. It may be hard. And listen, people look at the realities and they forecast off of that. And, and I understand a, re, a realistic view of life. And I'm not talking about being... Um, you know, in a position where we ignore the realities. I'm just saying that I want to place my faith in a superior God to what's going on in the world and have a belief that 2023 can be our best year yet. Some people carry around the, the Eeyore syndrome on them. So if you know who Eeyore is, if you have kids and you watch Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore is the little donkey that, that is always pessimistic and gloomy and depressed about everything. He carries around with him a blow up cloud. And anytime someone's having a good day, they blow up the cloud and say, it's about to rain. And some people view life that way. But if you're a person of faith, if you're a person that, that believes in the superior, the superior supernatural work of God, then you can have a hope for a better future. I believe your faith will lead your life. Whatever you are placing your focus on and the, fo and the, and the vision of your life based on either a, a faith in the current realities, a faith in your past, then that will lead your life downhill. But if you put your faith in who God is and what he can do, then that will lead your life to something better. I love the statement, the best is still to come. I love that. I, I, just, I just think it's amazing. Those are not trite words though for us. Because by faith, I believe God's hand is upon us. By faith, I believe his power is before us. And by faith, I believe the best is still ahead of us. By faith. I don't live by fear. I don't live by past. The cross has set me free from that. 
The grace of Jesus Christ has given us a new future. And I put my faith in God. I put my faith in the promises of God. I put my faith in the possibilities and the potential of God in our life. There's a verse out of the book of Psalms chapter 20. And it says it like this. It says, now this I know. I love that definitive statement. This I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. How many know that God's power is strong? His power is stronger than anything going on on earth. His power is victorious. And so it gives us the choice here in verse seven. It says, some people trust in chariots and some in horses. In other words, some people put their confidence in only what they see and the current realities. But for us at Life Church, we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We are people of faith. We are people that believe that God can do what he promised he could do. That's the foundation of our faith. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says that we live by faith. We live by faith, not by sight. It's a statement that say that we live by a supernatural view of life. We live by seeing life through the lens of God and what he can do. When you live by faith, you live by in the potential of what God can do. If you live by sight, then you're only going to walk in what you see. I want to walk beyond what I see right into all that God has for my life. And I want that for you today. After you believe in God, after you place your faith in God, the second thing I want you to know is that we have faith in God and then in what he can do. What can he do? What can't he do would probably be a better question. What can't he do? So when the Bible says that God will move mountains, that's not to be interpreted as literal, but as a metaphor to say that the biggest and the most difficult things are not too big for God. So whatever you're going through, whatever is holding you back, whatever the dream, the promise that God has placed in your heart, you need to know that it's not too big for God. Listen to what Jesus did and let me help you frame a mindset of faith because what can, can God do? So let's look at this. Jesus turned water into wine, didn't he? You remember that story? He turned water into wine. That's what Jesus can do. In other words, what he did is he gave the water an upgrade. Amen. Right? Now I'm not telling you go out and drink a bunch of wine, but I'm telling you water into wine is an upgrade. It's an upgrade. So why not you place your faith in a Jesus who can give upgrades? Well, a couple of you like that. That's good. If you're, listen, I, I, when I go to a parking lot and you know, Christmas, there's no parking spaces. You know what I do? Lord, I pray for one close to the building and I'll drive around and there'll be one there. Happens all the time. And I park right in that spot and I say, thank you for favor, Lord. Favor ain't fair. Sorry for the guy that was behind me. You know, I'm telling you. <laughs> Listen, why not walk in a level of faith in everyday life, in the things that you're going through and say, God, would you upgrade us in this way? Would you, would you help my life get better in this way? Upgrade. Jesus, he drove out evil spirits. We know that. So then why don't you pray for deliverance from the things that are holding you back in life? Instead of just settling for, well, this is just how I am in life. Well, you may be that in your past, but the cross has set you free to give you deliverance so that you can be who God called you to be. And so whatever is holding you back in life, whatever is, is gripping your heart, then begin to say, God, by faith, I want to be free from that. Free. Jesus miraculously caused Simon to catch so many fish that it broke his nets. Like that was a, a significant haul of fish. Now, the story is about a fisherman by trade and he hadn't been catching many fish. And Jesus said, push out a little farther, go fish again. 
Simon did it. He said, I'll do it at your word. And he cast his nets and he brought in so many fish that it broke his nets. So what if you're a business owner and you're saying, you know what? This hasn't been my greatest year, but by faith, I'm going to push back out and I'm going to say, God, would you fill my nets? Would you bless my business? Would you bless me so much that it begins to, to break my nets? Faith. If you own a business, then let faith guide your heart. Instead of going, well, the economy's a mess. I bet my business will be a mess next year. You know what? Your business will probably be a mess next year if you think that way. But if you begin to say, by faith, I believe that God can bless me. God can bless my business. Jesus calmed the sea. You remember that he calmed the sea. Why not begin to look at your life and if there's chaos in your life, if there's anxieties in your life, if there are things that are happening around you that are out of control, why don't you say, God, you calm the seas, then why don't you calm me? Why don't you calm the things around my life? Begin to walk by faith. Don't just settle. Listen, don't be settling for the things that are holding you back. Elevate your life past that by faith and begin to believe God. The Bible says that Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. So he had very limited resources, yet he was able to do everything he needed to do. Maybe the economy is impacting your life and you're like, I have limited resources. Well, why don't you start praying that your two fish and five loaves begin to multiply and God do miraculous things in your finances? Jesus made money come out of a fish's mouth. They needed to pay their taxes. And so Jesus said to one of his disciples, he said, go down to the sea and catch a fish. And he caught a fish and he opened his mouth and wow, there was money there. Well, why don't you pray for financial breakthroughs and, and things that would surprise you? Maybe there's, a, maybe there's a new job that you didn't know about and you get to take a new job. And you're like, I didn't see it coming. I mean, God can do things, right? Right? Y'all are looking at me hard today. Listen, faith begins to look at our situation and see the potential of God. Jesus healed a blind man and raised the dead. Well, why not begin to place your faith that God can heal and do things in my life that, that I need? Matthew chapter 17, 20 is a repeat of the same text with just a little extra thought to it. It says, Jesus replied, because you have so little faith. He says, truly, I tell you this. He says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed. So you don't have to have giant faith. You have faith. But if you'll apply that faith, he says that you can even say to this mountain, move from here to there and it'll move. And I love this. Nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Nothing will be impossible. God can do the impossible in our life. And so I don't know what you're praying for and I don't know what you're looking for in your life and I don't know the things that are holding you back and, and I don't know what you're hoping for in 2023. I don't know. You need to though begin to say, God, what can you do? And then I would encourage you to, to put action to your faith. I would encourage you to think about 2023 and the dreams that you have and then, and then I would write that down. I would say, God, this is what I'm praying for. And then, and then I began to, to stand on it and declare it by faith that, that this is what God will do. And I would begin to step out and I would put, I would do something that is in line with the dream that God has for you. Do something. I want to uh, just share a little illustration with you that I read and it's kind of an old school illustration, but it really works because we, we have to put our faith into action. And so Faith is so much more than a, an intellectual agreement. You know, sometimes, you know, I know I preach and you take good notes and it's awesome and, and you, you hear the message about faith and you're like, oh, that's so good for Pastor Tim. And, and just, it's just information, but it's not applied. And, and really, I don't like to preach just for knowledge. I really always want to try to make it in a way that you can apply it. And so faith has to be applied in our life. And it's not just an intellectual idea so imagine this scenario that you are at Niagara Falls and you're watching a 
tightrope walker push a wheelbarrow across this high rope above the falls. And you watch this, this man go back and forth with his wheelbarrow several times. And then you're, you're sitting there going, wow, that's amazing. He can do that. And then he asked for a volunteer to come and sit in his wheelbarrow as he pushes it across the falls. And, and so for many people, they have an intellectual agreement that this man can push that wheelbarrow across the, the Niagara Falls. But if I have to sit in it, I don't have that kind of faith. And so a lot of people have an intellectual agreement with me that faith is important, but you haven't put it into action. You haven't actually written it down and challenged your heart to believe for something new. You haven't begun to step out and say, God, I believe this is the direction of my life and I'm going to take a step in it. The Bible says in James 2, 17, it says, it says faith by itself, if not accompanied by action is dead. So it's not about faith of salvation because that's, there is no action of that. It's pure belief. But when it comes to exercising faith in the, in the moments that God wants to move in your life, he so often waits for us to take a step before he makes his move. You agree? Yes. Amen. So, what happens though, Pastor Tim, when it doesn't work out? Because many of you are out there and you're like, well, I've tried that before and it didn't work. Or I've experienced too many heartaches and disappointments and I really just don't know if I want to put myself there another time. I remember one time someone told me when I, because I preach about faith, I love faith. And someone told me, I, you give people false hope. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. You can't put false and hope together. But his, his point was, is that so often I, I try to inspire people to, to believe God's going to do something. And, and then when it doesn't happen, they, they live with so much disappointment in God. And, and I think there's a reality that we can come to that spot. And I want you to know that, that everything that I prayed for, not everything has come to pass. And so how do you grapple with that? How do you, how do you live by faith, but also know that sometimes it doesn't always happen? And Hebrews eleven thirty nine 39 says it like this. It says, all of these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. So in other words, all these people, they had a reputation of being people of faith. Like if you were to meet them, they go, man, you have great faith. Wow, you have faith. It says, yet none of them received all that God had promised. In other words, some of what they prayed for came to pass, but not everything. Some of it came to pass. So some of the things they believed God for happened. Some of the, the greatest prayers they had, some of them happened, but not all of them. And it says, here's what to do with those things that do not happen. It says, God had something better in mind. So I frame in my, my mind the mystery of God's yeses and nos. And there are mysteries because I don't understand why he does this and doesn't do that. I, I don't understand all the times that it happens and doesn't happen. And it, it, just, it just leaves us with a mystery. So what do I do? I have faith in God that he must have a better plan. And so if you've experienced the heartache and the disappointment, rather than let that define who God is and what he will do next, you need to frame that in the fact that God has a better plan. Therefore, I can still pray for new things in my life. Because these men, they experience some of the things and women, they experience some of the things, but not everything. They didn't quit praying when it didn't happen. They believed that some of it happened but not everything happened. I don't understand it all, but I do know this, and I'm certain of this. I'm 100% sure of this statement, that a life of doubt will not ever see a mountain move. And so I don't wanna live a life of doubt because something didn't happen. I wanna apply what the Bible says. And I just wanna be a, a Bible-believing Christian. And the Bible said that if I have faith, that mountains will move. And if there are things in your life, I pray that those mountains move in 2020 to 2023. 
And as we come to the end of 2022, I, I just want you to, to begin to, to allow yourself to believe that God can do great things. I don't want you to be framed by the past. I want you to be focused on faith of what God can do. Now, I know my heart. I know me. I, listen, I am oriented towards an optimistic view. Like, but even if I wasn't a Christian, I'd probably be telling you the best is still to come just because I'm wired that way. And I understand that. And, that. and that's okay. That's just how God created me. Other people are wired uniquely different. They're, they're critical thinkers. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a very positive way. Critical thinkers will solve problems that I didn't even know came up. Because I'm like, what problems? I'm like, best is yet to come. Awesome, you know, like, you know, the world's falling apart. No, nah, it's going to be great. I mean, that's just how I am, all right? So critical thinkers will, will, will solve a lot of problems. And I'm, I'm really happy about that. Uh, we need you. We need you. But I need you also, though, to think what God can do. I need you to also latch on to the fact that faith changes things. That you have a superior God to all the inferior ways. And I want you to know that, that yes, I'm optimistic, but that's not why I'm optimistic. I am optimistic because I have a, a Bible-centered faith. And I, I rely on the Word of God to direct my life. And, and therefore, I can look at next year with vision and say, this is what God can do. And I'm going to grab a hold of that and I'm going to pray for that. I'm going to believe for that and I'm going to walk towards that with all I have. Amen? Amen. I believe our church is going to have a phenomenal 2023. Amen. I do. I believe that. I believe that's the, the promises of God. I mean, I believe we're going to see 100 people give their life to Christ next year. Yes. I believe people will, will join us in our church because God is on the move here. Listen, I don't think people join our church, to be honest with you, because we have a great facility. <laughs> people link up here because they love the move of God going here and God is touching their life and there's ministry flowing out of here. Even when we get our brand new building, I'm not going to rely on a building. I'm going to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to do his work. And so I'm not going to sit back and believe that once we get there, then God will move. Because if I'm thinking when I get there, then I'm not operating in faith today. I'm putting my faith in a building. I have no faith in a building. I have a lot of faith in what God can do. Amen, church. Amen. So listen, frame your 2023 off of what God can do, not of what's going on in our crazy world. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. 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 Well, listen, um, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to place your faith in Jesus today. And a really important moment in our church service today. If you've never begun a relationship with our Heavenly Father, then I want to offer that to you. I want to share it with these four statements on the screen. I want you to know that you're loved by God. God's heart is for you. We have a good God and he loves you. And it has nothing to do with anything you've done or haven't done. He just places his love on us. All of us have sinned, the second statement. And that sin is what separates us from God. We have a, a righteous, holy God that can't be with sin. And when we carry sin, it, it separates us. So how do you get rid of the sin in your life? Well, Jesus did it. He died on the cross to pay for mine and your sin. He paid it. He took the punishment, what we deserved upon himself so that we can be pure, so that we can be righteous before God. And when you believe in Jesus as your savior, he's saving you from that sin so you can have a relationship with God. And so the fourth statement is accept God's gift of eternal life by faith. And I want you to know you have enough faith to be saved. You have enough faith to be able to have your life radically transformed today by the message of Jesus Christ. And so would you all just for this moment, bow your heads. 
And Lord, if there's anybody in this room that has never begun a relationship with you, God, I pray that this would be that moment. And if you're here, would you do me a favor and you want to say, yes, I want to believe in Jesus. I want my sins forgiven. Would you lift your hand to me? I'd just love to see your hand. This is a between me and you moment. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Let's all pray this together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. He came, he died, he rose again. I turn to Jesus for the forgiveness of my sins. And now would you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I may live for you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas. Hey, before you guys leave, before you head out, a couple of things real quick. If you said yes to Jesus for the first time today, or you rededicated your life to the Lord, um, you can head right outside into our lobby back there behind those exit doors. One of our team, they would love to take a moment and they would like to pray with you, kind of give you kind of your next steps. They'd like to give you a following Jesus book, a new believer's Bible, and just some resources to help you along your way. So way we can come hand in hand with you and helping you on your journey. Also at your seat, there's connection cards there. Um, fill out your information on the front and then on the back, there's a place for your prayers and praises. And uh, we love taking the time in our services to pray over the needs of our church. And so uh, we love doing that during our worship time and we get those from the connect cards. And then our staff, we go and we pray over each and every one of those all throughout the week. And so please fill that out today. You can drop that off in the containers in the back or in the lobby as well. That way we can collect them there. Um, and then also church, we'll see you back Sunday or Friday for Christmas. If not, we won't see Sunday. We'll see you back Friday for our Christmas Eve Eve service to come at four o'clock or six o'clock or both. And uh, it's gonna be great. We've got snow machines coming. We may get a natural snow machine, maybe. We may get some ice that day too. So, but we'll see you guys then. Have a blessed week and God bless. <laughs>